I'm here at Holland Village, Singapore, and today we are visiting the most recommended ramen place that I got from you guys in search of the best ramen in Singapore. Episode 12, baby! Which, if you have been around for long enough, you would know that is the People's Choice episode. And also one of my favorite episodes. Sampate has been the best ramen conversation for a while now, and while the ramen is great, the backstory is much less exciting. They were set up in Niigata, Japan in 1967, championing their shoyu ramen. And then, much later in March of 2014, our very own Brad Talk went like, Bro, do you wanna come over? And that's how we have Singapore's very first Sampote outlet, the one behind me. Really excited today because allegedly, Sampote has one of the best tsukemens in Singapore. And I have been missing tsukemens so badly ever since Funji. So hopefully this comes reasonably close. Let's get it guys. They have quite the range. Eh? And it's not like um, miso, shio, tonkatsu. There's things like this kot koteri se abura, which I've never seen before. They also have maze soba, but I can only eat two bowls. <laughs> this, uh, the okay. yeah. Thank you. What a fragrance! I'm being bombarded like dashi, the smell of dashi. I wouldn't expect a shoyu to smell like this much, but really. Hmm. And the noodles too, they already look cute. <laughs> Even just looking at it makes me happy. Nice cha on the cha shoe too. But anyway. Is this like one of the top three noodles in the series in terms of their quality of the noodles? It's a little unfair because it's also a little bit about the type of noodles. Like with tonkotsu noodles, you will have the thin Hakata style noodles. With that, it's harder to showcase texture. Whereas with noodles this thick, it is easier to feel the cuteness of the noodles. But regardless, wow, I, I really like this texture. At the end of the series, we have all the different categories. But I think this might be leading for best noodle texture. Anyways, the next hit, chashu is nicely seasoned, although I don't really taste much of the burnt uh, flavor, even though it's pretty significantly charred. Not that it's a bad thing, but I really really like that the chashu is properly seasoned. A lot of chashu lean towards the clean tasting profile, but I like this much better. And then the soup base. This is really tasty and umami. Like it's so forward with the seasoning. I'm not sure if I'm detecting it correctly, but I feel like there's a little bit of miso in it as well. Like there's a little bit of grainy cloudiness to the soup. But anyhow, still very delicious. This isn't a real miss per se, but the soup base is not particularly sophisticated nor layered. It's quite straightforward. And for sure, the least complicated shoyu we have had in the series thus far. Like to me, it tastes like a uh, more intense, more tasty uh, miso dashi soup, which is perfectly fine. And then the next miss, nothing really to do with them. But I am not a Myanmar person. I think it has been like seven, eight bowls of ramen since the last one with uh, Myanmar bamboo shoots. And I did not miss it a single bit. I, I don't know, it smells like socks to me. It could be that they didn't handle this properly, but I think it's probably more of a me thing because I cannot recall the last ramen uh, menma that doesn't uh, smell like socks to me. But yeah, delicious. Let's have our next bowl of ramen. Tsukimen, tsukimen. I kind of don't want to comment before tasting it, but the way the eggs are looking at me, <laughs> a bit like, it looks like I don't care anymore to me. But anyway, noodles. Don't you just love tsukimin? Tsukimin is just so nice. You take the noodles, you dip it into the broth, and you get straight to the point. 
Like with this really tasty broth, the umami is cranked to 11, but what's more interesting is the sweetness. I'm not sure if I'm tasting this right, but it reminds me a bit of pumpkin or butternut squash, like a bisque. And it adds a little bit of body and a bit of a rounded sweetness to it. Not too much, the saltiness is definitely more prominent, but it just makes it so, so delicious. <sighs> this is so biased. Because the only tsukemen I have had in the past 10 years is the tsukemen I had at Funji. And the comparison doesn't do it any favors. I think the noodles are not cold enough. There's very little of that hot and cold contrast that you look forward to in a tsukemen. I felt the noodles when they arrived and it was just cool, but I would like them to be icy cold, like how they do it at Funji. Despite Tokyo being in a cool period uh, during the time that I went, they still had like a serious ice bath with a ton of ice inside to chill every batch of noodles. And the contrast with the piping hot broth is just delicious. And then we move on to the noodles texture. These are the same noodles with the shoyu ramen I believe. And while they were stellar in the previous bowl, I was craving for something thicker and chewier to go with the more intense tsukemen broth. Again, it's not that this is bad, but it's just the comparison with Funji. These noodles are definitely Q enough and satisfactory in terms of the thickness, but I think going thicker would do more for the noodles. And lastly, this is a small thing, but I think there are not enough spring onions. I should definitely have ordered more spring onions in hindsight, because I think spring onions are just so important in this uh, tsukemen flavor profile, where the intensity of the broth is so high, you need something to cut it down. Okay. Time to digest. I'll go take a walk and I'll see you guys soon. Recap. Really tasty shoyu ramen and probably one of the best noodle textures in the series. Sure, it may not be as complex as the other shoyu ramens or even the other ramens in general, but complexity is a preference. Like some people want all the bells and whistles and want to be like intrigued and entertained by the flavor profile. Whereas most other people just want something that is delicious. And I think that this shoyu ramen is definitely delicious. Oh, one thing that I missed out. The noodle portion is actually kind of small. Like the amount of noodles for the shoyu ramen is quite little. And the amount of noodles for the tsukemen is actually a 1.5 portion. And despite me being a small eater, right, I was still able to finish both bowls uh, thoroughly. So those of you who are bigger eaters, please go for the kedama or extra portion of noodles. And then we move on to the tsukemen. I'm still very curious about where the sweetness comes from. It's so pleasant. I might be entirely wrong and that, that there is no fruit at all. Maybe it's just sugar. <laughs> but it's definitely sweet in a very holistic manner. And while I had a lot to say about the misses of the tsukemen, <laughs> It's simply because it's comparing to Funji. This tsukemen is really good. I wouldn't be surprised if this is actually the best tsukemen in Singapore. One plate I'll walk for the ramen, two plates I'll take a bus for the ramen, and three plates I'll go anywhere in Singapore for the ramen. And Sampote is... 3 plates. Both the shoyu ramen and the tsukemen were delicious. I cannot really pick one to be better than the other. I think both ramen showcase their type really well. And having such versatility is something very desirable in a ramen place. If you're gonna frequent there, you can have a different ramen every time. I know putting this as a three plates right, will invite a lot of comparisons. You mean Aldrich, this is better than this one which had two plates? I know. But we are really late in the series now. And we are definitely due for some moderation. Which is coming soon because the next episode is the last one and I have saved the most promising one for the last. Or at least I think so. <laughs> but yeah, that's all I have for you guys this time. I'll see you on the next video. Bye!